क्यों तो नहीं करनी Your life. Assalamualaikum. I am Zulfikar Ali from HR Consultants. Today, HR Consultant is live with Curtin University Australia. Curtin University is one of the most vital partner universities of HR Consultants. और आज हम लाइव हैं अपने उन स्टूडेंट्स के लिए जो Curtin University में अप्लाई करना चाह रहे हैं और Curtin University में ही अप्लाई करना चाह रहे हैं और उसके लिए अपने डॉक्यूमेंट्स को उन्होंने ready रखा हुआ है. Well, I'm going to introduce you, Mr. Surat, Regional Manager, South Asia. And my colleague Tahir Bird. Thank you very much, Mr. Surat and Tahir. Thank you. Thank you so much for inviting. I would like to tell you something about Curtin University. Curtin University is, is an Australian public research university based in Bentley, Perth, Western Australia. It is named after John, uh, John Curtin, Prime Minister of Australia from 1941 to 1945. Curtin University is the largest university in Western Australia with 55,000 students. The university was established in 1966. So we are going to discuss about Curtin University uh, ranking, location, courses, entry requirements, fee structures, intakes, scholarships, accommodation options, and the special arrangement for the Pakistani student due to COVID-19. So now over to you, Mr. Surat. Uh, can you please uh, tell us more about Curtin University short facts and reputations? Absolutely. Thank you so much, Zulfikar, uh, and thank you so much, uh, Team HR Consultants from Pakistan, to help us out, uh, give our word out to our Pakistani students. Um, my name is Surat Bhattrai, and I am the country representative for Curtin University. Um, Curtin University is ranked top one percent in the whole world. If we are looking at it from a QS ranking point of view, we are ranked at top two hundred and thirty in the whole world, which is pretty high compared to most of the other Australian universities. We are also the largest university in Western Australia, as um, uh, Zulfikar already said. Uh, we have about fifty-six thousand students studying with us at Curtin University, and we are located in three different locations within Australia. And a few other countries as well. We are located in Perth City. That's the main center of the city. We are located there for our Graduate School of Business and Law. We are also located in our Bentley campus. Uh, that is our main campus, the biggest campus there. Um, and we are also located in a place called Kalgoorlie, which is a mining town where we have a lot of mining happening and mining and mineral uh, excavation happening. And that's where we have our mining and mineral school there as well. Um, uh, talking about mining, we are ranked top one in Australia and top two in the whole world for our mining and mineral engineering. So any student who's looking to go ahead and do their mining or mineral engineering, they can get that option with us as well. Uh, talking about our different uh, options available uh, for students outside of Australia as well, if anyone wants to study with us with Curtin University, but wants to also know what the world is like outside of Australia as well. They can do it in one of our campuses in Dubai, Malaysia, Mauritius, or Singapore. So any student who wants to uh, is willing to study at Curtin University can go around in these locations, finish one year or finish one semester, and then transfer uh, the next year or the remaining semesters to Curtin University Perth campus as well. Um, in terms of the student population, as I said, we have fifty-six thousand students, out of which twenty-six percent of the population is international students. So as a student, when I am spending all that money to go to Australia and getting that degree, I also get that uh, international uh, student population where I can go around and um, don't feel homesick. You know, um, you go there, you go to a new place. It's very obvious that students start feeling left out. It's the the fear of missing out is very real over there, and it it is very easy for a, a person to go to a new place and feel left out. So that's where the international population of our students come in. From all over South Asia, we have a very strong population of international students. But having said that, you are going to Australia to learn the Australian culture, to get that Australian exposure. We also have a 74% local population, which helps the student get that idea. So tomorrow, when you are going into a workforce, or tomorrow when you want to go and work somewhere, you know what um, what kind of language they are using, what kind of attitude they are looking for. Uh, even smaller things like nuances in the la language, like jokes. If someone 
uh, at your job interview cracks a joke and you don't understand it, it's going to be very hard for you. So for that, you will need that local exposure. You will need to understand what it is like. And we help our students with that as well. Um, another good thing about our university is that even amongst the domestic students that are there in Australia, out of the total number of students who want to study um, their university degree in Western Australia, 53% of those students end up choosing Curtin University. And the remaining 47% end up choosing the other universities within Western Australia. So even amongst the domestic students, we are very, very popular. Um, I think, yeah, we, we get a good number of students from Pakistan and our Pakistani students there are, are actually enjoying their time at Curtin University. I've rarely seen anyone who said that I went to the university, did not like the resources, did not like the facilities, did not like the professors or was unable to cope with the entire system. Can you please uh, tell us about uh, most popular courses for the Pakistani students? Yep, absolutely. So uh, our engineering is pretty popular. Our civil engineering and uh, well, essentially our engineering, a few of the civil engineering courses, we are ranked top 100 in the whole world for our such courses. Uh, so our engineering is obviously very popular, both at undergraduate as well as for postgraduate level. We also have a bachelor's of computing where computer science is a major with cybersecurity as one of the majors as well. So the student can choose to do a bachelor's of computing with a specialization in cybersecurity. Uh, another uh, very popular course amongst our students uh, from Pakistan uh, in their postgraduate level is masters of predictive analytics. It is a very good combination of data, uh, data science and business analytics. So not just does it show what's happening currently, it's also going to be able, the analyst, the predictive analyst will be able to tell you what is going to happen in the near future. So any business who wants to know, hey, where do I invest in? What is the next five years going to look like? Then you go hire a predictive analyst, uh, sorry, analyst, and the analyst is going to give you those ideas. So that's one of the good popular courses as well. In our health sciences courses, we have uh, masters of public health, which is very, very highly ranked. We are top 40, uh, sorry, top 50 within the whole world and top six within Australia for our masters of public health. So our public health is very, very high in demand and Pakistani students love our courses in terms of the variability and in terms of the ideas that we have. Um, we also have a masters of project management, which is good for any student who wants to do. If you are an engineering student, if you are a science student, art student, mathematics students, whatever you are, if you want to do a master's degree where you want to learn how to um, uh, run a company, make sure everything goes right, then that's something interesting. We also have a master's of management, which is a similar course. Um, and we also have an MBA. Our MBA is very, very highly ranked because of our accreditations. Um, another of our course that uh, Pakistani students are very interested in these days uh, is our uh, master's of journalism. So any student who's done the undergraduate in journalism or even wants to do an undergraduate in journalism they are pretty welcome to our university. Um, we have a state-of-the-art right. TV studio within the university with green screen, with editing rooms, and with a proper studio backdrop and a studio editing room on the side. So student can not only learn the theoretics of um, going and studying journalism, but they can also work on the background and learn how to edit, how to work, how this post-production works. Along with that, we also have a working um, FM station within the university. So any student that wants to work, um, it, it is perfectly easy for them as well. Going and studying journalism, they can also work on the background and learn how to edit, how to work, how to work. Pakistan student, if they want to apply for Curtin University, you can directly contact us on WhatsApp 0346 474720. Uh, Mr. Surat, can you, uh, what networking uh, opportunities you, do you offer to the international students like in IT programs and in engineering programs or business programs? Um, so uh, our IT programs, so our university in itself has a very good tie up with industry. So we have been very proactive in saying that because if tomorrow a student graduates and um, does not find a decent job, then that reflects on the university as well. So we make sure one of the priority components to teaching the students at Curtin University is that we want to make A, the students self-sufficient, 
and B, we want to make sure that the student gets good job in the future. So when you go ahead and uh, get into a new workplace, you don't feel like, oh, this is something that I never know. This is something that I, I've never been taught, or this is something that I don't know how to do. I don't know how to process. I'll give you an, a quick example about this. Our school of pharmacy has a half a million dollar worth of robotic arm, two arms that helps the student that just all it does is picks out the medicine from the dispensary, puts it on the counter. Half a million dollar worth of that equipment. The reason for that is tomorrow when the student goes up to a high tech facility and has an opportunity to use something like this, we don't want the students to go there and be like, oh, I, I never know how to use this, or I don't know what this is. Similarly, for our, uh, for our IT students, we have partnerships with companies like Cisco, which is a massive world tech giant. All of our courses are properly accredited. Now imagine you're going and studying for a computer course, then it is accredited with Australian Computer Society. Imagine you're going there to study bachelors of petroleum engineering that is accredited with Engineers Australia and also with the Washington Accord. So it's not just the partnerships with the different agencies, but also with the organizations that normally help them in the future. So tomorrow when they graduate, they're becoming a part of something bigger, a part of a career that is going to help them. And very now and then, a lot of the times, these our, our partners normally come into the university, talk to our students, give them information, give them ideas. Um, another thing that I wanted to mention here was our, for our mining and mineral engineering. Any student who studies mining and mineral engineering with us has to go and study at a Calgary campus, which is a little far away from the Perth campus. But the Calgary campus is very closely located around what's called a super pit. So it's called a Calgary super pit. So if you Google it, you'll find the image of the super pit. So that's where all the construction, that's where all the mining activities is happening right now. So the students will be studying and on the side, they will have an access to live projects. So all the people from those companies are going to come and hire people from us because we are, as I said, top one in Australia for our courses. So students have that extra opportunity for, for any course that you're looking for. Most of our courses are properly credited and properly ranked and properly well advised into the future so that the students do not have any issues. And they will be attending a lot of uh, lectures, workshops, tutorials, along with other students, as well as with guest lecturers who are going to tell them what their career is going to be like. Well, uh, is there something at the university that could uh, help student to pursue job or internship? So normally internships for internship, uh, whichever course has an internship module, we do make sure that our students have uh, an access to all of our uh, partners. Now, we do not uh, guarantee the internships, but we will definitely put them forward. It is up to the student to go there, show them the resume, show them how it is done. But we will help with resumes. We will help you with interview preparation. We will help you with, you know, the whole overall um, aesthetics of going into an interview, making sure that our students, again, as I said, are industry ready at any point of time. We just make sure of those things. And when that happens, when, when the students get into, um, if, uh, if the course has an integrated part of internships within the uh, course unit itself, say if it's a bachelor's of commerce where you have an in, um, integrated uh, internship program, then the university will help you say, hey, these are the five of our providers, choose. But if it is something outside of the course unit and the student still wants to do it, the, student, the university will be like, hey, these are the partners, start throwing out your CV and see which one picks it up first. Normally, uh, one of the good things going on with our postgraduate science program is that most of our students get employed within the first three months of graduation. So that's something very interesting for us. Right. Or complete details di ja rahi hai, related uh, jobs ke baare mein, related courses jo bhi best courses kare liye university offer kare liye. Un tamam chizo ke baare mein bataya ja raha hai. Abhi inshaAllah hamara ye session continue bhi rahega. Aapki jo bhi queries hain, aap abhi foreign se niche comment section par clear kijiye. Wo students jo kare liye university mein apply karna cha rahe hain. On spot and the registration fee, uh, uh, on spot aapke application place kijiye. On spot aapka jo bhi admission process kijiye jayega. Mr. Suraj jo aapke jo bhi queries aapke tamam queries ko clear karenge. 
अभी अपने जो भी आपके क्वेश्चन है आप नीचे हमें कमेंट सेक्शन पर क्लियर कीजिए या फिर आप इस पेज पर दिए गए नंबर है पर अभी आप कॉन्टेक्ट कर सकते हैं व्हाट्सएप कर सकते हैं कॉल कर सकते हैं आपकी जो भी क्यूरीज आपके तमाम क्यूरीज को क्लियर किया जाएगा आपकी पर्टन यूनिवर्सिटी से जो भी रिलेटेड क्यूरीज है आप बैचलर से रिलेटेड है मास्टर से रिलेटेड है आयुष से रिलेटेड है फीस स्ट्रक्चर यूनिवर्सिटी आपकी जो भी क्यूरीज है थोड़ा से अभी हमें नीचे कमेंट सेक्शन पर क्लियर कीजिए मिस्टर सुरेश हमारे साथ आज अवेलेबल है कर्टन यूनिवर्सिटी के लिए पूछना चाहिए वो आपकी जो भी क्यूरीज है तमाम क्यूरीज को क्लियर करेंगे नाउ ओवर टू यू मिस्टर जोफर खान यू कैन कंटिन्यू थैंक यू uh mr surat uh, can students transfer credits from their previous programs uh yes absolutely it's a part of the right of the student to transfer their credits from one provider to another provider they definitely can do that if they are studying in pakistan and they are going ahead and saying hey now i want to transfer the rest of my credits to say uh another university say at curtin university we are more than happy to do that we will assess the credits we will look at how many credits the students get and we will issue them an offer letter with a certain amount of credits but again um as a immigration point of view uh, you guys at hr would know it better on how to handle the credits and how to handle the students application when they have they are applying with credits but yeah in terms of the university we are more than welcoming for our credit applications uh what are the tuition fee plus additional cost for each semester or for a year normally normally since we have like a massive load of courses we have more than about 200 300 courses at uh, the university and uh, there it's 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 a it's really hard to tell an exact amount of tuition fees uh, from all all across the board but um if you're looking at anywhere around say bachelor's of commerce it goes anywhere around from 26 27000 per year uh, without the scholarship of course with the scholarship you have about 25% scholarship um, on the first year's tuition fee so it 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 comes down to about uh, $8000 less um, from that amount of tuition fees and it goes anywhere around from 30 uh, 36 up to $36000 per year depending on the course depending on the subject we have anywhere from Uh, science and engineering humanities um, health sciences business and law uh, and we provide all the courses from a diploma level all the way to phd level uh, how many uh, intakes do you have in a year depending on depending on the course that the student is applying for certain specific courses have only one intake per year uh, either a february intake or a july intake but most of the courses will have two intakes february as well as july we do not have a november intake we only work with a um with uh, the february or july intake so the students can apply to either one of these i have i have question yes please i'm so sorry that question i want to ask about uh, scholarship that what's the requirements about scholarship what's the requirement for scholarship can you okay, tell me perfect Yeah, thank you so much. Um so for our merit scholarship so we have a couple of different types of scholarship. So one of our scholarships is our merit scholarship. So any student who wants to study uh with Curtin University can apply for a merit scholarship. Actually when they apply for the offer letter it gets automatically assessed and they normally get that uh 25% scholarship on their first year. The way it works is uh mostly for our postgraduate students um in their undergraduate degree if they've done a four years undergraduate degree from a section 1 or a section 2 university and their percentage is anything above 60% they will be eligible for that scholarship that means it depend on percentage yes our scholarship is oh. entirely based on percentage so now we we understand that there are certain bursaries in the market from different other providers uh we do not provide bursaries we only provide scholarships so we have mainly we have three major scholarships so one is the merit scholarship that i just told you about the 25% on the first year another one that we have is a family or alumni scholarship say if your immediate family like your like your parents you know your siblings you know any anyone as such has studied at curtin or is studying at curtin then you will get 25% scholarship on your first year again so that's that's for someone say i i don't i only had like 55% in my undergraduate i was not eligible for the merit scholarship but my uh, parent or but, but my sibling studied at curtin university and that allows me to get that scholarship as well because scholarship is very important for most of the times for students who really want to go ahead and study another scholarship that we have is our english language scholarship any student that has a 0.5 less overall 
or 0.5 less in any of the sub bands will get up to a maximum of 10 weeks of English language. At Curtin University, uh, up to 10 weeks of English language courses are free of cost. So we have an ELB scholarship as well. So um, the students can, the, depending on what, how less their score is, they will either get a two-week two week ELB or a 10 weeks ELB, English language bridging course. So choosing either of that, it is free of cost for the students at Curtin University. So that's another scholarship that we have. Uh, we also, there is also another scholarship um, called a Destination Australia Scholarship. A Destination Australia Scholarship is provided by the Australian government for any student who wants to study in a regional area. For us, that's our Calgary campus. Any student who wants to study Masters of Engineering Science Mining and Masters of Engineering Science Metallurgy, these two courses, Masters of Engineering Science Mining and Masters of Engineering Science Metallurgy, if they want to study this with us at our Calgary campus and in their undergraduate degree, they have 75% or above, they will get $15,000 per year of scholarship. That is provided by the Australian government. So there are other benefits of studying in the regional area. Of course, the low expenses, um, there, there is part-time work, right? But there's very less places to expend, uh, spend your money, low rent, um, uh, very low transportation cost. All of these things like help the student to um, be very self-sufficient as well. Uh, but uh, besides that, the government is giving you $15,000 scholarship. So the, the amount of fees comes down to almost negligible. Right. Uh, are there separate deadlines for uh, admissions and the scholarship applications? Uh, normally, no. For Destination Australia scholarship, there is a certain deadline. So that was, I think, the first week of May was the deadline for the Destination Australia scholarship for 2020. But for the rest of the scholarship, when you apply, you are, if you are eligible, you will be uh, provided with the scholarship immediately. There is no deadline. There is no, uh, there is no uh, extra added um, step for you there. The only thing is you need to apply before um, the application deadlines are cut off. Normally, the application dates are about a month and a half or two months before the class start date. So what that means is if your class is starting in second week of July, then around two months ahead of that, we will stop our admissions just to make sure that you have enough time to prepare your financial documents, lodge your visa and everything. Well, thanks. Uh, does the Curtin University require an English proficiency test like IELTS, PT, or TOEFL? And what is the minimum requirement? Thank you so much. Uh, yes, we do require a standardized uh, proficiency level English tests. That would be IELTS. TOEFL, PTE, CAE, OET, you choose, um, according to the ease of uh, where student is and if that is available. Now, one of the good things with Curtin University is that for Pakistani students, now this is only for Pakistani students, we are accepting medium of instruction letters as well. Wonderful. Say if the student is studying from a specific university, they are studying from a specific university and they have um, that uh, um, letter from the university stating that they've completed their degree in English. If it says that, then the student needs to provide that letter instead of their English language test. And that will work as a substitute for IELTS of overall 6.5 with no band less than six. Wonderful. But for rest of our courses, most of our undergraduate courses, the requirement is six overall each band six. And our postgraduate courses is 6.5 overall, each band six. Sometimes, depending on the course, like nursing, like something like um, uh, maybe law, somewhere around the line, they will have higher um, English language requirements. But for the rest, it's it's a general requirement. It's a six overall, each band six for undergraduate, 6.5 overall, each band six for postgraduate. Right. So, uh, what are the admission requirements for E 12 students or for A level students? So for our year 12 students and for A-level students, uh, the entry requirement is pretty simple. Um, unfortunately for our, uh, so most of our courses have an ATAR requirement. Australia works on something called an ATAR requirement. Just like how, you know, Pakistan, you have year 12 scores. In Australia, they have ATAR scores. So um, we have ATAR score requirements as well. For Pakistani students, if they want to go for a bachelor's in commerce or a bachelor's in arts, 
uh, they can apply with anything above 75%. If they have anything above 75% in the year 12, they can easily apply to that. No issues altogether. For any of the rest of the courses, like engineering, bachelor's of advanced science, bachelor's of health sciences, any of the health sciences courses, law courses, then uh, the requirement will just go up. So uh, if the students do not have the required score, what they can do is they can possibly get into the Curtin University through our college. So we have a college called Curtin College where the students can do the foundation level or the diploma level, and then they get directly into the university into the second year. They will get the credit for their di diploma degree and they will get it into the second year. Mind you, the Curtin College is within Curtin University. It is not in a separate place. It is not in a separate area that the students will never have an access to the university. Even as a college student, you will get an access to the facilities in the university as well. For our A-level students, normally our requirement is five points in your second year. Uh, what is the minimum percentage required for the bachelor's student like 16 years of qualification from Pakistan? Um, so with the 16 years, I think our minimum requirement would be 75%. 75% would be the minimum for Curtin University. Uh, and if you are going for Curtin College, then anywhere around from 60% would be okay as well. Are there any specific requirements for certain programs at Curtin University, like statement of purpose, interview, reference letters, or supplementary forms? So normally we have, when you are sending in an application form, when a student is sending in the application form, we expect them to complete, completely send a whole set of application form. Now, what that means is uh, an application form, a something called a GSAF, that's Genuine Student Assessment Form where we know we get all the details, a snapshot of the students' details there as well. And SOP as well, because it helps us identify um, if there is any loopholes. We, it helps us identify if there is certain things that we do not, sometimes what happens is there might be a two year gap in a student's studies, but it might be due to very genuine medical causes that other ways would not be explained. But with an SOP, the student can very easily explain that and that would be accepted as well. So SOP for that reason is, is required. Along with that, just the academic documents, English documents, passport, you know, the general deal. Well, so uh, how do you select an applicant and what aspect do you consider for an application? Normally, if they have the academic, so there are a couple of things. One, academic eligibility. So you have to meet the minimum academic requirement. Second is the English requirement. If you've met the English requirement, then you're good to go. If not, then we provide you with either extra English language courses, that is free of cost till 10 weeks, of course, we provide you with that. If not, then the third option for, uh, oh, sorry, then the third thing that we check for is the GTE risks. That is the genuine temporary entrant risks as per the Department of Home Affairs. So what that means is your immigration histories, your previous visa histories, your uh, finance histories, your uh, current, uh, your current in your home country, uh, why, if you've done any research or not, all of these things, we, we try to compute all of these things and try to understand, and then uh, we uh, issue the offer letter if everything goes well from there. Uh, do you have residential facilities? Yes, absolutely, uh, we do. We have uh, quite a fair bit of um, on-campus accommodation available for our students as well. Um, it ranges anywhere from $168 per week to $268 per week. Now, mind you, these are residential facilities for students only. If you are bringing along a partner, then that might not be very f uh, feasible for you. So in these student accommodations, what you'll get is you'll get a room with your furniture. Uh, you will get, uh, you'll get all the amenities like a study table with your cupboard. Everything is there with a living room. Um, Wi-Fi facility, electricity facility with a laundry room downstairs so that the student does not have to do a lot of effort during the study life. Perth is one of the cities with the lowest expenses per week within Australia. If you compare cities like uh, Sydney, Melbourne, Brisbane, Adelaide, Perth is the city with the lowest amount of expenses that is required. And this is by the government, as per the government. So when a student goes there to study, either the student can live on the campus if they are okay with that. Uh, the, the, the fees for the on-campus accommodation is very less compared that to other uh, parts of the cities in other different uh, states as well. If they don't want to do it, they can live on their own and 
the stat as per the government uh, housing stats is that it uh, the rent starts anywhere from ninety dollars per week and goes all the way to like three hundred three hundred fifty dollars per week. At the last, I would like to know the special arrangements for the Pakistani student due to this COVID nineteen. So currently, we are still going on and taking in applications and making sure that any student who is looking forward to coming to study at Curtin University does not miss out on anything. Uh, our English language courses that just started in the month of May, um, we changed the physical classes into online classes because of the current scenario. So all of our students uh, have been attending that. For the July session, we are still waiting on a few final uh, footsteps to identify if we can do it uh, physically or if we want to go online. So that is still under consideration. But for the moment, uh, we are still going on as usual. And for our Pakistani students, especially, what I would like to say is make sure that your documentation is ready. Make sure that you're a step ahead. Um, we have, fortunately enough, just, I think, uh, early this week, we received a visa for Curtin University, even at the times like uh, current scenario where we, we, uh, it is said that you know, visas are not coming through. We are still getting visas from Pakistan at this point as well. So the students can and should definitely prepare the documents, start the process, get the whole thing in order. If you want to go and study with us in July, you can start that as well, even if it means, if, if it comes down to online studying module, we'll do that. If it comes down to physical, we'll do that as well. If the student does not want to do it, they can definitely defer it to the next intake, that would be February, 2020. Sorry, February 2021. Thank you very much, Mr. Surat, for the very informative uh, session with us. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Zulfika, and thank you so much, Tahir. Um, uh, I would like to request all the students to go ahead, talk to the guys at HR Pakistan, and make sure that you get proper information before you start up your application. These guys are more than qualified to handle your application and make sure um, that your application gets that success rate that is required. These guys are one of our best agents in Pakistan. And yeah, we vouch them with uh, anything that we have. Thank you so much, you guys. Thank you very much, Ruth. Jitne bhi humare Goobers hume dekhne hai, agar aap Curtin University mein apply karna chate hai, please feel free to contact me. My contact number is 03464747020. Thank you very much. Stay healthy, stay safe, stay home.